me start this video by saying that every time I'm approached by a writer and asked if I might illustrate their book, I'm incredibly flattered. It's an honour to be asked. But the truth is, I'm almost always going to say no. Now, if you're a writer looking for an illustrator for a book you've worked on, or if, like me, you're an illustrator who's been approached to work on someone else's book, please watch this video. Hopefully, I'll have some advice and some insight for people on both sides of this one. And at the end, I'll cover some of the things that you might need to consider when teaming up to produce a book. By the way, I should say I'm going to show you some footage of me drawing while I talk, just because it's probably more interesting than looking at my face. Now this is a video I've been meaning to make for a while, but I recently saw a post on threads that kind of got my back up a little. I'll come to that in a minute, but first a quick word on publishing books. There are broadly two routes you can go down. Traditional publishing is where a publisher, be it one of the big guys like Penguin Random House or a smaller, less established company, buy your book and make it and get it to the shops. There's no cost to you, the writer or illustrator here. In fact, they pay you. So if you've written a picture book that you're going to submit to a number of publishers, forget about looking for an illustrator. The truth is, if your book is picked up by a publisher, you'll get little to no say on who illustrates it. And that's because the publishing house knows the market and they will have a specific way that they want to go with your book in order to maximise sales. They may have an illustrator in mind or they may have a certain look that they know they want to go for. If you submit your manuscript with suggested artwork, it may make you look a little amateurish. And it goes without saying that you should always check the submission guidelines of the publishers that you are approaching. For picture books, some publishers might want to see more than one manuscript from you at a time. If you're an author and illustrator hoping to go down the traditional publishing route, then you'll need to submit a dummy book. And that's a whole other topic that I'm not going to go into here. That leaves us with self-publishing, which is more accessible than ever now with the likes of Kindle Direct Publishing and so on. And going back to that post on threads that wound me up, I'm assuming that this is the route the author was looking to take. I do feel a little guilty for using this person's post in this video, but I do think it's useful to see a real-world example of a typical request from an author. The post read, I'm looking for an illustrator for a series of children's books that I have been writing who won't charge me until the books start making money. Like maybe 70-30 split of the royalties? I know this is a long shot, but I can't draw and I need help. Help. Right, there's a lot to unpack here and I'll go through it all. But I hope the first thing that you noticed, whether you're an author or an illustrator, is that this person is looking for someone to work for free. Yes, they're offering a cut of the royalties, and I will come back to that in a minute, but they're basically asking them to do all the work up front with no payment. Now, depending on what kind of book this is, notice they don't say. This could amount to weeks or months of work. A typical picture book takes months to illustrate. It's not just a case of doing the artwork for each spread. Before you even get to that point, there's things like character development, research, thumbnails, roughs, colour studies to determine the best way to approach the artwork and all the back and forth between the various parties involved that inevitably takes time. There's a reason that illustrators of picture books tend to get larger advances than the writer. It's because they're having to spend a lot more time on this at the start than the author. And I'm not saying that writing is easy. I am speaking as someone who both writes and draws. But illustrating a picture book takes a lot of time. And that is time that the artist should be getting paid for. An illustrator agreeing to this proposed deal would be giving up a significant chunk of time. Time which presumably they could be filling with paid work. Yes, but they'll get a cut of the royalties later, you might argue. Well, that brings me on to my second and perhaps most important point here. Most books do not make any money. And I'm not just talking about self-published books here. I'm talking about all books. All the books that are made every year. 
Now, it's hard to find exact figures here, but speaking to one of my friends in publishing, a figure that we found that is often quoted is that only the top 5% of authors will earn royalties from their books, and only the top 1% will earn a full income from writing. That is, they don't need to take on other jobs. And that's because the publishing industry is based on the success of a small handful of titles. The Harry Potters of this world subsidise the production of other books, which are made a loss. According to Sasha Black, who is a best-selling self-published author, and who also runs workshops, mentoring sessions, and writes books and podcasts for would-be authors, 90% of self-published books don't make any money. And on average, self-published authors have to publish five books before they start making any money back on them, and a whopping 29 books before they start earning what might be considered a full-time income. Now, those figures are based on all genres of books, but I'm willing to bet that the number is even higher when it comes to picture books, just because the majority of self-published books sold are ebooks, and the ebook format doesn't lend itself that well to picture books. Yes, authors will earn a higher percentage from sales for each book when they go down the self-published route, but they also have all of the upfront costs involved. Editing, layout, design, illustration, marketing, all of that needs to be done and all of it costs money, unless you plan to do all that yourself. But that's a lot of different skills to learn and master. And if you want your book to succeed, you should probably be getting help from professionals in these areas. Now, I want to be very clear here. I'm not saying don't self-publish. There are obviously people like Sasha making money from it. And if you've written a book that you're understandably proud of and you want to see it in the world, being able to self-publish is an amazing option. Just go into it with your eyes open. Be aware that it's hard work, that it costs money and it is not a get rich quick scheme. And please don't expect a potential illustrator to love your book baby as much as you do. Don't ask them to jump on board and work for nothing. So that brings us on to money. The average advance from publishers for a picture book illustrator in the UK is anywhere between six and a half and eight and a half thousand pounds per book, which puts it roughly in line with the figure of ten thousand dollars quoted for the US market. And this figure will be much higher for established illustrators. That money is typically paid in three instalments, and there will be royalties on top of that if the book sells enough copies to pay out the advance. And when it comes to royalties, the author and illustrator get an equal share. Now, just as an aside here, when I was writing the notes for this video, I asked an author friend of mine what they would expect to pay an illustrator for a picture book, and their guess was out by about 60 or 70 percent. Now, admittedly, that friend writes novels, not picture books. But if somebody in the industry who appreciates the work involved in getting books to market can get it so wrong, it's hardly surprising that the average person doesn't know how much they should be paying an illustrator. All right, what if you're an illustrator and you're early on in your career and the idea of illustrating a book for the experience is appealing? Well, firstly, bear in mind, it's likely going to take a lot of time. And that is time that you could be looking for paid opportunities or working on pieces for your portfolio. You don't need to have worked on a real book in order to produce examples of your work. You could illustrate a classic that's out of copyright, or a folktale, or you could come up with some ideas of your own. You needn't write the whole story, just create a character and imagine a couple of scenes to put them in. If you're going to be putting the time in for free, I'd say it's probably better to be doing that on your own project than someone else's. And you never know, maybe you'll come up with the next... Gruffalo or a tiger who came to tea. Again, I'm not saying you should never illustrate a self-published book for someone, but just see that you are being fairly paid and that both the author and illustrator are clear on what the parameters and time frames are. For that, you need a contract. And as an author, you need to be clear in your initial shout out to illustrators what it is you're looking for. So going back to that original post looking for an illustrator, it said... I'm looking for an illustrator for a series of children's books that I've been writing who won't charge me until the book's making money. 70-30 split. I know it's a long shot, but I can't draw. Please help. Now, putting aside the lack of any money or the vagueness about what royalty split there might be, there are a few more red flags here for me. 
Firstly, we don't even know what kind of book this person has written. Is this a picture book or a middle grade novel? There's a massive difference between illustrating a full colour picture book and the black and white spot illustrations of a chapter book. And illustrators may do one, but not the other. So we don't even know what kind of illustrator this person is looking for. There's also nothing about the subject matter of the book. It might be a book about robots that build cars or a book about a family of mice that live in a tree. Some illustrators will be happy to tackle either, but many won't. If you're a writer looking for an illustrator, be specific. You needn't tell us about the book. We don't need the full synopsis or even the elevator pitch, but we do need an idea of what work would be involved. So, for example, you're seeking an illustrator who can bring machinery to life for a 32 page, 600 word picture book. And you should probably also give us some indication of the time frame. By the way, those figures of 32 pages and 600 words are significant. Not just because it's useful to know how many images you'll be expected to produce, but because the way books are made means the pages come in multiples of eight. 32 is a standard picture book size, but some will have 24, 40 or 48. The more pages, the more expensive the book will be to make. The word count for picture books tends to be between 500 and 1000 words. If you see page numbers that aren't 24, 32, 40, or if you see a vastly higher word count, it should be a big red flag as it suggests that the writer is not familiar with the industry or is unclear on what kind of book they've written. And that's not going to bode well for a self-published book. You should also be clear from the start on whether the manuscript is ready and has been fully edited. You don't want to find out that this whole project is not ready for the illustration stage yet, or that changes have been made halfway through and those car building robots are now car building mice. All of this brings us on to contracts, which are there for the benefit of both parties. The contract should include all this detail again. So agreed number of pages, agreed timeline, and that timeline should include not just the deadline for the finished artwork, but the point that the author can expect to see some character ideas, page thumbnails and roughs, and when the illustrator can expect payments. Remember, in traditional publishing, the illustrator would be paid in three equal instalments, usually once on signing the contract, once on completion of the roughs, and finally when the book goes to press. You should also always include a revision clause. This states how many changes the author can request of the illustrator. Any changes beyond the agreed number will cost extra. I've heard stories of illustrators not having a revision clause in their contract and the author deciding to alter the text or add extra characters halfway through the job, meaning that the artwork needs to be completely redone. You will also need to agree at some point on the dimensions of the book. Now, it's possible that this is something you'll want to determine when it comes to the thumbnail stage. For example, it might become obvious at this point that the story would be better told in a landscape format rather than the originally suggested portrait aspect ratio. But at some point, this and the size should be agreed upon and included in the contract. Personally, I would also include what file format the artwork should be delivered in. Generally speaking, CMYK colour mode for print and something high res like PNG or TIFF file. Definitely never JPEGs. You will also want to detail what's going to happen with the text placement. Has the manuscript been paginated? That is, does the author know what words will appear on what page? This is crucial before the illustration process can start because the illustrator needs to know what is happening on every page and how much space to leave for the text. And who will be adding that text to the image? Is the illustrator going to do that or is that something that the writer is going to do? Pacing and page turns are really important considerations in a picture book. The Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators or the Association of Illustrators are really good places to find more information about contracts. There's one final and perhaps petty point I want to raise about the initial threads post, and that's the last sentence. I know this is a long shot, but I can't draw and I need help. Now, I've no doubt that the original poster just meant this as a light-hearted plea for assistance, but it sort of suggests that illustrating a picture book is just a case of being able to draw, that it's not a massive specialist skill set of its own that takes time and effort to learn and master. It suggests that just being able to draw a picture would be enough. 
In reality, there is so much more to being able to illustrate a picture book than just drawing a picture. So whether you're an author, an illustrator, or you are hoping to be a bit of both, whether you want to traditionally or self-publish, I hope you found something to think about in this video, and I really wish you good luck with your book.